Hello, everybody. This is uh, DFS Chan, and my name is Palmer. <laughs> this is Chan and Palmer. Um, welcome to our video once again. We are here to talk about June fourteenth, uh, League of Legends games. It's a five game slate again, so that's why I'm making these videos again. Um, yeah, it's an exciting slate. I'm ready to dive in, but as always, before we dive in, this weird guy right here has something to say. Like and subscribe, uh, boys and girls, like it, subscribe. That's right, like and subscribe, everybody. Thank you. All right, so. Sorry about the pause there. Um, yeah, let's dive in. We have first, let's go through the Chinese matchup as we have major roster changes here today. Um, let's see. Weibo Gaming versus LGD is the first one. Well, let's look at the odds. So it's a heavy favorite odd slate. We have minus 900, 800, 700, 750 and 650 respectively in the LCK. So we have five favorites by heavy margins. Um, so it really depends on, I think, um, the kill upside, first of all, on a slate like this. Um, and then also kind of look at what underdogs have, you know, those like few or several favorable factors that they can help them, that can help <clears throat> the underdog team to be able to pull off an upset potentially. So... That's probably that those are like my two overarching thoughts on the slate as to how to look at the slate. Um, and that the, 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 those like points kind of help me guide through, you know, go through each slate and the analysis and kind of have that in my mind as I'm going through the numbers because they really help me kind of better understand what certain roster changes could mean potentially and how they could uh, uh, you know affect have impact on the the numbers that we're seeing um, just comparison wise so that's that's my overarching view on that on the slate all right individual match analysis is first with Weibo gaming um, versus LGD LGD is winless in terms of series. They're 0 and 5. Um, I believe they're 0 and 5 in the series. Um, they've won a lot of games, I think, like one game in the series. Um, each of their past series, I believe, or maybe except for one. But so like LGD has what it takes to be able to kind of take a game in the series, but it's a best of three series every time. So they just ended up losing those series. But Anywho, um, the total kills over under is set at 23. This is pretty low for an LPL game. So we'll see if that actually translates into the low kill upside game or low kill game uh, for this uh, Weibo Gaming team. I think Weibo Gaming will be popular just given the highest odds that they have and people will see the zero win that LGD has. But... I'm not sure if I will agree with those odds. I, actually, I don't. I do not agree with those odds. I do not agree that Weibo Gaming should be the biggest favorite on the slate over LGD. Just having after having gone through all the all the matchups, I believe that Weibo Gaming is not, you know, is not the biggest favorite in my opinion. And I'll tell you why. Um, as mentioned, I think LGD takes a game off in the series. So they have what it takes, I mean, to, to pull off an upset. Um, they Their jungling uh, has been pretty good. Meteor has been pretty good. As you can see, LGD actually has a jungle EGPM advantage. Um, so that's that's quite fascinating, in my opinion, because way, way for Weibo Gaming, the jungler for that team has been pretty bad. Pretty, pretty poor performance, actually. Um, even though they've won some games here and there or series, um, still like I just feel like they've won the games through their team fights, through um the laning advantages that Xiao Hu and um the Shy had, you know, in the top and mid lane respectively. 
and Weiwei kind of just like, you know, helping out the bottom lane and all that. But he really has not been impressive. Um, his stats are pretty bad. I kind of wanted to show you that. Um, yeah, Weiwei has been kind of bad. So Meteor actually has an advantage over Weiwei, believe it or not. Uh, Meteor actually has been playing, playing pretty well. Um, but LGD is also, this is the roster, one of the roster changes I want to talk about. It's decade as starting at the, in the top lane. How do I feel about this? No, I mean, like not very impressed. Um, I saw, I looked up decades uh, metrics um, and it's not very good. Um, I think it's okay. Like it's like mediocre here um, in terms of sorting by EGPM. I mean, you see all these top laners you know, from split one in the LDL level, in the academy level, he is kind of like toward the middle, right? You see, you see what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, I, I just don't see Decade like making a huge, huge, significant difference. Um, so I just feel like it's still it's gonna it's still gonna have to go through Meteor the, in the jungle, and then maybe in the top lane, but I just don't see Decade, you know, taking advantage of the Shy. The Shy knows, like, I mean, he's experienced, you know, the veteran, so I think, you know, what's thrown at him, the Shy will take care of the business here, take care of business here um, for Weibo Gaming. So I'm going to go with Weibo Gaming wins, but LGD's jungling control metric intrigues me to maybe pull off an upset maybe not impressed with decade though all right let's see edg oh yeah in terms of kill upside like i said i think it's very low um you see 0 0.66 0 0.77 so yeah i mean that's low as well Weibo Gaming likes to play a little bit on the conservative side in, in terms of kill upside. So I think while it's kind of a safe bet that Weibo Gaming probably wins, I just feel like their game kill upside is not that great. All right, next matchup on the slate is EDG versus IG. Um, we have total kills over under set at the highest on the slate. So this is going to be a bloodbath, I guess, um, for what it's projected as. And then combined kills per minute to kind of support that is 0 0.82, 0 0.92. So, you know, I think that supports the high kills total un over under. Um, and then other metrics, I mean, if you see them, EDG is favored in almost all of them. Um, so I think EDG really should have an advantage in almost all the lanes here tonight. Um, and, and then also, um, I did want to point out though, EDG's, um, GSPD was in the negative. So he, they really have not been performing as well as they did, you know, in the spring split, but nonetheless, I think they should have enough talent to be able to beat IG, especially given that, I mean, Uzi, the legend, one and only legend, AD carry is, has signed with EDG recently, um, and is starting tonight, and then, um, where is IG's? Uh, yeah. Wen is starting in the top lane, and then uh, Beishang is starting in the jungle. Beishang hasn't played since November of 2022. And then... Um, Uzi has not been has not played since March of 2022, so both of those guys have not played have not played at the competitive level in, in a long time. Um, Uzi even longer, so we'll see how he meshes with the rest of the team. And then when was you know the top new top laner for IG was mediocre EGPM wise among the LT, LDL top laners, which is the academy level for the LPL uh, Chinese League of Legends. So I just don't think he's going to make that much of a difference, especially given how Allah has been, how well he's been performing. I think Allah is going to really shit all over when, to be honest with you. So I like Allah quite a bit um, tonight. And then JJ should have an advantage over Beishang. Now in the mid lane, I'm not sure. I think crying really maybe should have like a softer, soft advantage there. 
And the bottom line is the question mark, right? Like how well is Uzi? How good of a form is he in after not having played for like six months, seven months, or even longer, or even the whole year rather. So, you know, we'll see how, where he's at in terms of the skill level and preparedness and all that. But, you know, he's played with other team teammates before at BLG and then RNG, obviously his whole, you know, his former team, so he knows how to kind of mesh in and within the team. I know BLG they struggled a lot. I think last year with Doggo and Uzi both on the roster and who to start and all that. But I think this is a roster to be uh, to stay. Um, Uzi will be starting for a, probably for a while as long as his health holds up. Um, Leave, who used to be the old starter at A to Carry for EDG. You know, he's having some personal issues that, you know, that he needs to deal with. So we'll see if leave comes back at any point in the summer split. But in the foreseeable future, I think Uzi is going to start at 80 carry with the rest of his team. And then IG, yeah, like I said, Beishang joined. Let's see. I mean, Beishang joined really, really recently. I mean, he is taking the place of Tianjin, who had the EGP, the last EGPM metric, I believe, in the LPL. So um, Beishang should be an improvement, but still, he hasn't played at the esports level in a while. And he's going up against one of the good junglers in JJ. I think JJ really should do well here tonight uh, against Beishang. And who knows, like maybe Beishang like has some secret cards that he, he's going to be dealing and then kind of find out like, you know, if he's going to do really well for the rest of this team for IG and get everybody going, which could happen. And that's kind of what the IG coaching staff is looking for when they brought on Beishang and then called up when. So, you know, kudos to them, to the management to bring them on. Um, but I just don't think Beishang is that much of a bigger that big difference to be able to make a huge change like that. So, all right, next one is TES and FPX. This is probably the one that I am most confident in, I think. Um, Bonnie is starting for FPX. He is of Korean national uh, uh, descent. Um, he... It's the, actually the only Korean guy on this roster. And I mentioned this because these nationalities, because, you know, there are often communication issues when they first start in the LPL. Like Ruler at A to Carry, you know, he got the help of Kanavi on that same JD, J, JDG team to be able to speak Korean and learn English at the same time. But Bonnie does not have that luxury on FP, being on FPX. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but in terms of like the actual matchup between TES and FPX, TES really should have an, have an advantage in every single lane, and they do in, in terms of EGPM. I think the jungle position is Tian. I think he'll be very he'll be a very happy man going up against Bonnie today. I think that is where I think it's gonna be. I think I like TES quite a bit tonight. I think the kill upside is good enough. For, for us to consider top esports as well. Um, in terms of Tian's mediocre 21, 218 EGPM, we'll see how that happens. You know, we'll see what that happens, uh, you know, when they, um, when they play. But I just don't see Bonnie making that much of a difference. I think Tian is going to have a smash spot here tonight. So TES is probably one of my favorite stacks to use today. All right, HLE versus DRX, and then Genji versus Guangdong Freaks. Uh, HLE and Genji are both respectively big favorites. Um, DRX is still kind of experimenting with the rest of his rest of their team, so we'll see who starts Rascal and then Croco and Juhan. I mean, who knows who's gonna start at jungle and then. Kehu and Fate, who knows what, who's going to start in the mid position as well. I think it really depends on, you know, who the coach thinks that they're going to give, you know, the best chance to win. Um, so we'll see, but I'm not going to play any DRX. I think HLE really should win this by a lot, um, especially given that Viper and, uh, let's see, Viper, Zika, and Clid should have. Tremendous advantages over um, 
over their counterparts here tonight. So um, EGPM wise, I think the only metrics that I saw that favored DRX are top lane and the support position, but by not very much. Um, so I like HLE tonight, I think. Um, and Croco is last in EGPM and LCK. So I think H at that kind of supports the HLE winning tonight. Um, and, you know, the high kill upside maybe that they could carry playing DRX because DRX's CKPM is kind of juiced at 0.74. And HLEs, is, they like to play slow, but, you know, it could come up just based on how DRX likes to play. Um, I don't think I'll play any DRX, but we'll see. All right, next one and the last one on the slate is Genji versus Guangdong Freaks. Um, Guangdong Freaks is a 500 underdog, but I really like them. I mean, I think they're going to make a big um, wave into the LCK. I think they could make the top five if they wanted to. Um, really bad. I think they've been performing probably one of the as a, one of the best teams in the LCK. Um, going up against the Juggernaut and Gen G, but it's not going to be e an easy task. Um, in terms of total kill is over under, it's set at 19, just like the other LCK game. Um, in terms of the actual pace of it, yeah, I think this this is the game to target. And if you are kind of trying to choose an LCK team or members uh, of the LCK team, so I think Gen G is probably the best LCK um, pick tonight, I think amongst all four teams in Korea. So we'll see uh, how it pans out there. Um, in terms of like the actual matchups, yeah, Guangdong Freaks has a lot of advantages. Like I said, I, I don't think they deserve that plus 500 odds. I think it really needs to be smaller. I think, Katie, this is going to be a closer matchup than most people think. Um, Guangdong Freaks has an advantage in the mid lane and the top lane as well. So they have some factors that help them to be able to pull off this upset. So we'll see what happens there. All right. I think that's all I got for you guys today. Sorry. I'm kind of like half delirious, real tired, trying to move our family, uh, my family, you know, to, to Atlanta. So, um, but yeah, anyway, in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys have any questions or just want to chat league, reach out to me at DFS Chan. Um, and please, please uh, hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the video. Thank you. Bye-bye.